You mean there's been a return to a title screen button this whole time? Every time I restart the episode, I have to turn the console off because it's a DS game and I gotta do like the hard reset and wait for it to load and everything. You learn something new every day. Luke and Leighton visit the Herzen Museum on the north part of the town to learn about the Elysium box. But upon their arrival, they find the gate locked. With no way of entering, the pair puts off visiting the museum to ask around about the Elysium box. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, I got really sick and confused and lost. In this episode, we're hopefully not going to have that much of that. And wow, I just realized we're probably we're going to get puzzle number 69 when we're entering the Love Shack. Oh my, hello there, tall, dark, and handsome. Care to come in and catch the show tonight? I apologize, madam, but we're in the middle of... Oh, are you getting shy on me? Don't worry, hot stuff. I don't bite. Tee hee hee. Oh, and who's your little friend there? Aren't you a precious boy? Is this what Barton was warning us about? That, like, he didn't want, like, child eyes to see? <laughs> he didn't want him to go to, like, a strip club? Me? Um... Sorry to change the subject, but I couldn't help but notice Mr. Beluga entering your cabaret. Oh, are you friends with Mr. B? Something like that, yes. Tell me, does Mr. Beluga visit here often? Mr. Beluga is certainly a patron of the arts, that's for sure. I can't save much more, though. Oh, but you are so, such a handsome devil, mister. So charming, so dapper, and such a gentleman. Show me you've got the brains to match those looks, and maybe I'll let a few facts slip. It's so stinking weird seeing like a an inappropriate scene in a Professor Layton game. Uh, this is not puzzle number 69, but it is our 69th puzzle, the jeweled necklace. I have this old necklace, but the thing is, it's not really my taste anymore, so I decided to sell it. But when I was getting it appraised the other day, I realized something weird. Each stone is worth a different amount, but if I break the necklace in three places, the three gem strands will be worth the same amount as one another. Can you believe it? Here, if you... See if you could figure out where you gotta cut it to make that happen. Hint number one. You'll have a tough time if you just dive straight into adding up different strings of gems. There's an order you need to proceed in. Why don't you start by adding up the total value of the necklace? Hint number two. If you added the totals correctly, you should have gotten $7,800. You want to divide this total into three sections of equal worth, so each section of the necklace in your solution will need to be worth $2,600. Hint number three, no single strand will contain more than one of these three stones worth a thousand or more dollars. Coincidentally, each of these three stones will form an end of, for their strand. Now all you need to figure out is which side of each one thousand plus dollar stone connects to another stone. And then I like how I said that weird, I was like, stone, I'm like, it's a stone, Luigi, you didn't make it, it's a football, I chiseled it, and whatever. Uh, let's see, we got that, and then we got that. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. So what's up with my mic? It's like booping around right now. Okay. That's right. Each strand of gems is worth $2,600. Pretty nice chunk of change. I thought it was a chunk of cheese for a second. I was like, mmm, cheese chunk. Handsome and smart. You're some catch, aren't you? Consider me smitten. Consider me Leighton. About Mr. B, he's definitely here looking for something, but I can't say I know what. The search must be going badly because he's kind of crabby whenever I see him now. Well, we got our 69th puzzle, which is nice, but we still can't go in, it seems. Uh, I guess we'll have to continue our search elsewhere. Nothing we could do over here, so I guess we'll head northwards. Unless you have a puzzle for us, you do not. We're just gonna head northwards towards the tower that Luke mentioned, I guess. Uh, that's back at the museum, just making sure. We're gonna head this way, now you magically want tea. Do you see that watchtower, Professor? Yes, I'm going to look at the watchtower! First I talk to this guy, make sure he doesn't have a new puzzle for us, it's really creepy. And again, everyone in this game looks really creepy, except for Luke and Leighton. Maybe that's why he strives to be a gentleman. Like, maybe being a gentleman gives you good looks, and 
Uh, everyone else is just a terrible person. That's why they all look so ugly. Uh, okay, then. And I guess that explains why I look so ugly, because I'm clearly not a gentleman, I guess. Uh, we got that. Uh, we got nothing else, it seems. We got one more hint coin. Come on, I can find the third one. I know you're around here somewhere. I got a knack for finding hint coins, except not really, because I'm really bad at it, apparently. Now let's just talk to this guy. Whoa, this place is covered in garlic, and it definitely smells like it. Black. Yes, it's very pungent. It's a good thing I brought a handkerchief. My eyes are watering. My nose hurts just from being in here. Finally, some customers. Come in, come in. His name's Garland. He says garlic. It's been months since anyone came by the shop. My shop's been out of favor with the townsfolk recently. I could see why, or rather, I could smell why. It's hard to breathe, let alone shop all around this garlic. So it smells. Big whoop you got here to class up the shop. You know, it's here for protection. We've got what you might call a vampire problem here in town, and garlic keeps them away, see? Vampires? Seriously? Do I look like I'm joking, boy? See that castle over there? That's the freaky guy. That's where the freaky guy lives. At least that's what people say. I'm not saying I believe the talk, but you can never be too prepared, you know. So, people keep on talking about this vampire. I'm surprised that, like, Layton hasn't freaked out a bit more about this. Do you see that? Yes, I see the watchtower! Jesus, Luke! What do you want me to do? I can't do anything right now. I... Uh, um... So, left, right, and forward. What? So, if I go this way, this guy's here. Does not have a puzzle for us. Guess so, what's up anyhow? Oh, no, they're really just some old houses. I got letters from folks in Dropstone for them. Wow, these are people in Dropstone sending letters all the way out here? That's what I thought at first, too, but then something connects Dropstone to this place. It's hard to describe in words, so I'll just leave it at that. Whoops, I got a dash. The mail can't be late. Mr. Parcel, please wait a moment. Gosh, he didn't even look back once. He must be incredibly focused on delivering the mail. Quite a perplexing individual, that one. But never mind him. For now, we must focus on our investigation. Uh, guess we can't do anything here. It's a dead end. Thank you. A dead end. So I can, like, get my bearings straight. Uh, is there going to be a hidden puzzle? We got the three hint coins, but it's really just a dead end. I guess maybe there'll be a person that pops up here from time to time, but for now, it's just pointless. Yes, I see the watchtower, Luke. You mentioned it. one more time. No crumpets for you ever again. Oh, pathway. Oh, God. I have a feeling we can't go to the watchtower yet, so I'm just gonna appease Luke and go this way right now. Yeah! Oh! That scared me silly, Professor. What's making that awful ruckus? I don't know, but I think it's coming from right above us. Quick, Luke. Up the stairs. And by quick, I mean after I examine Erethine. If I could find anything. We got nothing. Okay, not even like flavor text stuff. It's kind of weird. I'm kind of okay with it, because it's kind of annoying when it pops up. And, of course, as soon as I say that. Who was that? Oh, hey, hey, it was just myself. How hilarious, Luke. Uh, I got one more around here? Maybe? Possibly? Yeah, no? Okay, I guess we're good. Head up here? I didn't think we could go up the... Hello! Couldn't go up the hello. Oh, it's a smaller tower than I imagined it would be. Uh, hidden coin right there. And right there. And then, right nowhere. Bah, Golder, Gold, Goldarned vampires. Oh, hey, his name is Jeff, but he's a G Jeff, so I don't like him. Get off my property! Uh, are you all right, Mister? Mm, who goes there? You don't need to tell me. I know vampire henchmen when I see them. Oh, wait a second. What are you talking about? We were just here. We just heard a scream and came to investigate. Say what you will, Sonny, but it won't do you no good. I see through your vampire lies. If you really want me to believe you're not vampires, you'll solve this puzzle and you'll do it quickly. It's the ultimate setup. Everyone knows that vampires hate puzzles. In a quiet town, there's a tower that commands a view of the whole town. Since you could see the whole town from the tower, logic dictates that you should be able to see the top of the tower from anywhere in town. However, there's one place in town shown on the map from 
below from which you clearly have no chance of seeing the top of the tower. Find and circle this place. Hint number one. Looking for a place that has its view obscured by another building? Hmm, it doesn't look like there are any places around the town like that. Hint number two. You need to find a place where the tower's top can't be seen. To put it another way, you're looking for a place that doesn't allow you to see the outside of the tower. Hint number three. There's one indoor location from which you definitely won't be able to see the outside of the tower. And the solution is that you cannot see the top of the tower from... Da 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 da! Inside the tower! Just leave it to me! Mage's apprentice strikes again! Good thinking! Pretty good for a vampire! Unless you're not one of the bloodsuckers underlings after all. If that's how it is, then listen to me when I tell you you'd best keep an eye under on um, that castle over yonder. It's the nest of one of the most fearsome undead creatures around. A real, er, live vampire. A real live vampire, you say? Don't make me say it again, buddy. We almost got all these mysteries opened up to us. The Vampire of the Castle. Rumors have been surfaced regarding the vampire said to live in the castle at the edge of town. Terrified by such talk, not a soul in full sense dares to draw near the castle. Could a vampire actually be living up in Herzen Castle? Finding out a lead out here is pretty slow going, huh? Indeed. Perhaps our only choice is really to wait for the Herzen Museum to open. Gosh, if that's the case, maybe we should revisit the museum. You never know, it might have opened up while we were away. Hmm, alright, you've got a point. I hope the place proves more useful to us than this uh, this time than it did last. Oh, for a second I was like, oh hey, they're not going to do the thing, but instead they did a fade out and gave it to us now, for whatever reason. Uh, nothing new for us. Uh, G Jeff, I guess. I'm gonna see the slow cutscene. Okay, don't go towards the tower. So as long as Luke doesn't tell me to go towards the tower anymore, uh, we should be good to go. I like the other thing is visit the Hersey Museum again. Uh, I don't want to examine every single person along the way. That'd be kind of annoying. Uh, if we go over here, is there a new person? Nobody here. Okay. So I guess we're just gonna head on backwards. Uh, this person's distressed, but I don't care. Look at that! The gate appears to be open now. Now we can finally go inside. How convenient! And look who's here. Just these two guys bickering in sorts. First, let's see if we can find any sort of hint coins. Do I have any of these windows? I gotta be better with like examining like the key areas that look like they would have something hidden in it, but even still, I don't think there's anything here. Hmm, no, do you hear that? It sounds like the conductor and Mr. Beluga are arguing again. Nothing? You don't even have so much as a lead on it. I thought I told you to find it and find it fast! Uncle, you gotta cut me some slack. It's no piece of cake sneaking around with my pig on my tail. Uh. Plus, that professor dude from London has been out playing detective too. Keeping a low profile takes out on a guy, you know what I'm saying? My feet are killing me from all this running around. How about you let me take a break? Besides, if I get caught sneaking around like this... You always were a layabout, Samuel. Quit your whining and get back to the task at hand. Until you find that box, I better not hear a word break coming out of your mouth. Gosh, Mr. Beluga really let him have it. Do you think he opened up to the gate too? I'm not sure, though it appears that while the gate was open, the museum itself is still closed. But let's put this discussion aside for a moment. Tell me, Luke, do you recognize the symbol at our feet? The stone has been worn down over the years, but the design is one I've seen before. Sure, it looks like the symbol on that book we found lying out on the street. That it does, but I'm certain I've seen another something like this in another location too. But where was it? Ah, oh, yes, now I've got it. What is it, Professor? 
We must locate Inspector Chelmy at once. I need to see that photo he acquired from the crime scene. But this town is so big, how are we going to track him down? Well, it's quite late now. He may have returned to the hotel for the night. What do you think? You're probably right. Quick, let's head back to the hotel. The resident. <sighs> and they're magically gone. How convenient. So we just came here to listen to them have a conversation. Riveting. Let's go over here then, and we're just gonna go all the way back. Bring it around town. Let's see if I could find the. Uh, I just wanted to see the dog again. Just want to see if I could find the hotel with ease. Survey says. Uh, I just want to check this guy once again. I guess it was just like a one-time thing where that guy had an extra puzzle for us uh, after that thing activated. Uh, he still wants tea. Return to the hotel. Is it over here? It wasn't this far in, was it? Might be making a mistake. Um, nope, it's right here. And here he is, right on cue. Inspector, there's something I need, I need to ask you. Could you spare just a moment? Oh, Leighton, I've seen you've been busy. I didn't think you'd manage to solve 50 puzzles so soon. So I guess at this point in the game, if you don't have 50 puzzles solved, you cannot advance the story. I hear you've been very busy sniffing around town for clues. Tell me, has your search yielded any genuinely useful facts yet? Perhaps, would you mind showing me the photo you recovered from the door's apartment? Oh, am I to understand there's a clue to be found in that photo? Hmm, well I see you solved 50 puzzles so far, so I can tell you're serious about the investigation. My top priority is solving this case, so if you think you can help, I might as well show you the thing. What the devil? Something the matter, sir? There's a blasted hole in my pocket! Oh no! <laughs> that photo! I've been scattering not the pieces about without even noticing. This is a low point in my career. It seems that all the remains of the photo is just what this one scrap. You got a photo scrap, only 15 to go. I guess we'll just have to give up on ever seeing that photo again, huh? Tough to say. The pieces were still all in my pocket when we entered Full Sense. I'm sure of that much. Inspector, do you recall the path you took when around town over the past couple hours? Bits of it, yes. Let's see. That was number 110. Chelmy's Route. Use what the inspector remembers to find the path he took around town. Well, only one turn I made was at the intersection with a cafe on it. Oh, and I also passed in front of one hat shop. Oh, and one flower shop too. And I didn't walk any farther than necessary. Now that you have heard this recollection, you could trace the route the inspector took through town. Hint number one. The inspector says he took one turn on a block with a cafe, but that doesn't mean he had to turn in the direction of the cafe he saw. Instead, what he's essentially saying here is that he was only able to turn once at any intersection with a cafe. Hint number two. Begin by heading right from the starting point. Hint number three. When you reach the goal, you'll be coming at it from the left. The solution looks a little bit like this. Just go down, and then go down here, and over here, and just like that. Pretty straightforward. This should do the trick. Except it wasn't a straight path, so I guess it isn't straightforward at all. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right, you may have figured out the inspector's path through this town, but the search for those photo scraps is just beginning. And then, after leaving the northeast corner of the town, I came straight back to the hotel. That should be enough information to get started, thank you. Come, Lou, let's see if we can't recover the pieces of, of the photo by re retreating, retracing the inspector's steps. What's so important about the photo, Professor? I'm unsure of the photo's content, but I have every confidence that it will lead us to the Elysium box. Say no more, I'm sold! After all, your intuition never fails. Let's hurry to the northeast corner. I think we could get through this little path where the bulldog was sitting. Yes, let's. I'll be. I'll lead the way. Aw, oh, man, I'm leading the way, so. Oh, puzzles were sent to Granny Realton Shack, which is odd. 63 and 115. 
Okay, we're gonna go back for those. The professor and Luke decided to investigate the northeast corner of the town. Would it be crazy of me? Hmm. Saving progress. Not quite yet. Chapter 5 Shadows on the Street Corner. Is it outlandish of me to want to get every scrap piece of paper before the episode ends? <laughs> Probably. Especially since we're having a puzzle right here and now. Um, keep this under your hands, but that hole in the inspector's pocket? I made it because I love this game so much and I wanted to prolong the plot as long as possible. A dog did that. A dog officer? What about? I thought it was like a dog officer, like a Paw Patrol or something like that. Inspector Chummy had an, um, an altercation with the canine by the path of the northeast corner of town. Well, dogs can sniff out mean people, you know. That's just more proof that he needs to be nicer. So it may seem a little prickly at times, but he's actually quite kind. Would you care to hear a puzzle the inspector once told me? I don't know how the puzzle's gonna show us how kind he is, but whatever. Puzzle number 111. How many turns? Chelmy sent this his squad out to investigate an incident. Before leaving, he said this. I want you to search the entire area shown on this map. Take any route you want, but report how many times you turned in that process. You've... You're free to turn left or right, but U-turns are strictly forbidden. The Bobbies competed, completed their shift and returned to report their turns. Judging by the reports, though, it seems that at least one man wasn't telling the truth. Mark the me mark the liars with an X. Unfortunately, Barton isn't on here, so we can't automatically say it's him. Hint number one. If one of the... Also, I like how these are basically the same old men that we see in like every single puzzle, but they just like give them different outfits or whatever for the situation. Hint number one, if one of the Bobbies had said he turned a total of a thousand times during the course of his investigation, the inspector would have no reason to doubt the Bobby was telling the truth. Hint number two, with U-turns forbidden, there's a certain logic you should be able to find in all this confusion. Confusion! Hint number three, leaving the station and turning an odd number of times regardless of the street will land you on a vertical street. Conversely, turn an even number of times after leaving the station and you'll end up on a road that turns horizontally across the screen. The solution is that... Uh, you want me to circle the liars or mark them with an X? I can't... Oh, okay, that's how you do it. I just gotta tap it. 105 and 1 for 13. These two guys are lying. This should do the trick. And there we have it. Sharp thinking. The two men made oh god, it's so many singing text. Any Bobby who did his job properly would have done okay, I don't care. Well done, sir. Now I must be off. The inspector and I need to sweep the area for clues. Do you watch yourselves run out on the streets. There's no telling what's out there. Likewise, officer. And we get a diary key, okay. That's a nice little surprise. We haven't got one of those in a while. Let's check it out. Father has always done what he wants, regardless of who he objects. He's that way with everyone, even his sons. It's no wonder my younger brother always seems so irritated with him. Even so, he and I must endure father's whims because, as the next in line to rule full sense, we cannot leave this town even if we want to. We are stewards of this town and we must stay here to watch over it. And as for this guy, he also has a puzzle for us. Welcome back, sir. Still busy with your investigation, I see. Though lovely, our town is quite vast, so take care not to tire yourself out. I'm sure your feet must be sore. Why not sit up for a moment and enjoy this puzzle I prepared? I thought he was going to give us a foot massage or something like that, but no. A puzzle massage is just as good. Puzzle number 92, Precious Metals. Lucky you! You've inherited a five square plot of land that's rich with precious metals. Each chunk of copper ore has a value of 1, each silver chunk has a value of 3, and each gold chunk has a whopping value of 5. You're allowed to pick 5 squares of land for yourself, but the 5 squares must be connected to each other. Squares diagonal to the other to one another don't count as connected. Your task is to claim the most valuable 5 square plot possible. Can you do it? Hint number 1. Gold ore is worth a whopping 5 times as much copper, so or as copper, so focus on claiming some of that. Wouldn't it be great if you could find a five square plot of land with two pieces of gold ore on it? Sadly, that doesn't seem likely. Hint number two. Unfortunately, no single five square plot of land contains two pieces of gold ore. However, you just might be able to find a plot that has two pieces of silver ore, 
But remember, your first priority is choosing the plot with the highest total value. Hint number three, copper is worth one, silver is worth three, and gold is worth five. Given these values, you should be able to find a single plot of land worth 10. Find this plot and you'll find your answer. The solution is right over here. Uh, it's like, how do I draw this? Is that it? That's all I have to do? Why can't I just like color the entire screen? Uh, I shouldn't do that. I guess they wanted me to draw like this and we're good to go. This should do the trick. Good old smiling Layton, making me feel that everything's okay. True gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. You're rich! The plot of land shown is the only one- You know, if it's my plot of land, can I just dig it all up and be like, forget the rules, I just want to get all of it. Your dancer, should you begin to feel weary from running about town, do stop in to rest. Periodic breaks can be quite refreshing for the mind and spirit as well as body. And he gave us another diary key. Uh, let's go ahead and read it. No longer able to tolerate father's selfish ways, my younger brother has left full sense for good. Strangely enough, father doesn't seem affected by it at all. If anything, he only seems more focused on excavating even more gold from the mines. Is that miserable or worth so much to him? I'm beginning to think that I will never understand that man. While we're in the area, I think it would be a good idea to check up on Flora, see how she's doing. Hmm? Where's Flora? Ah, you startled me. Where did you get off to, Flora? Me? I will, um... Come now, Luke. A gentleman never forces a lady to say more than she wants to. Oops, of course. Where are my manners? Sorry, Flora. Ah, uh, don't give it a second thought. Say, how'd your investigation go? Did you find out anything more about the Elysium box? A bit, but nothing concrete. What we need is more time to comb the area for clues. We could be here quite a while, so if you feel tired, go ahead and turn in, dear. I will. I sure hope you do find a good solid lead soon. So now we need to examine the flower. Do you have a puzzle for us, Flora? You do not. Okay, so I guess she's just going to be resting here for the rest of the game, it seems like. And now this guy wants tea, but I don't care about that. I care about the investigation. Uh, okay. Uh, before we do anything else, I want to end this episode off by going to Granny Realton's shack and just getting those puzzles out of the way. Uh, because I don't want to start the episode going over some puzzles that, like, we m had missed in a previous area. So, I'm just going to make my way down this way. Thankfully, we didn't have any cutscenes activated along the way. And... Oh, hey, wow, she has a house inside of her house. The rich sure know how to live. Uh, nothing here, it seems. Yep, I decided to set up camp in town. Pretty spiffy digs, don't you think? If you lose track of puzzles while running around town, have a look in there. But don't let those puzzles pile up in here. You could regret it later. You know, that house, the mini house inside her big house, is still bigger than the house that she had on the train. So, conceivably, she could have another mini house inside of there, so she could have a house inside of her house inside of her house. Jeez, talk about compact living. And we got two new puzzles here for us, so let's go ahead and solve them. Puzzle number 63, numbered cards. Cards labeled 1 through 6 are arranged in order as shown below. Rearrange them so that they satisfy the following conditions. 1. The sum of the numbers on the top row must be less than must be one less than the sum of the numbers on the bottom row. Two, the two cards in the right column must add up to five. Three, the five card must be in the immediate left of the four card. And four, the one card must be placed in the left column. Hint number one, the sum of all the cards is 21. Knowing this, you could deduce that the top of row, the three cards in your solution should add up to 10, while the bottom row must add up to 11. Hint number two, the one card belongs in the top row. Hint number three, Put the four card in the middle column of cards. The solution is that, actually. Just two single movements and you have your solution. Just leave it to me. I'm a natural Sudoku. That's what that is, right? And we got a hamster toy from that, that's cool. 
We're probably getting close. If we only have three more camera pieces to go, we probably are getting close to the end of the hamster toys as well. And maybe the tea things too. I gotta go ahead and check on that. I'll do that in between episodes. Final puzzle for the day, tricky digits. Two cards sit on a table. Each has a different single digit number written on it. When set side by side, they form a two digit number. Then by flipping their order, you could make another two digit number. Adding the total from these two two-digit numbers, two two-digit numbers, my god, gives you one of the totals shown below. Which one is it? Hint number one, once you see the pattern that runs through this puzzle, it's not very difficult to solve. Hint number two, 15 plus 55 equals 66, 34 plus 43 equals 77, 53 plus 35 equals 88. So is the pattern clear yet? Hint number three. Isn't it funny that adding a two-digit two number to another two-digit number with the reverse digits always gives you a sum that's a multiple of 11? My head hurts. The solution's A. Call it a day. And now to test my theory. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. And with that, we are done for this episode. So next time on Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, we will go ahead and continue our investigation. Uh, searching for scrap pieces of paper now. How exhilarating. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.